This video covers the most challenging 50 questions and answers from the CITB book, Health, Safety and Environment Test for Operatives and Specialists. This video is part of a series, covering all the questions and answers from this booklet. Please ensure to press the like and subscribe to the channel to receive the next video in the series. For your information, the actual CSCS test is 45 minutes long, you will need to answer at least 45 out of 50 questions correctly to be successful in the test. Good luck, thank you and let's get started. Question 1. You are about to start a job. How will you know if you need any extra personal protective equipment, PPE? A. By looking at your employer's health and safety policy. B. You will just be expected to know. C. From the risk assessment or method statement. D. A letter will be sent to your home. The correct answer is C. From the risk assessment or method statement. Question 2. Look at these statements about personal protective equipment, PPE. Which one is not true? A. You must pay for any damage or loss. B. You must store it correctly when you are not using it. C. You must report any damage or loss to your supervisor. D. You must use it as instructed. The correct answer is A. You must pay for any damage or loss. Question 3. You have to work outdoors in bad weather. Your employer should supply you with correctly fitting waterproof clothing because A. It will have the company name and logo on it. B. You need protecting from the weather and are less likely to get muscle strains if you are warm and dry. C. You are less likely to catch Viles disease, leptospirosis, if you are warm and dry. D. Your supervisor will be able to see you more clearly in the rain. The correct answer is B. You need protecting from the weather and are less likely to get muscle strains if you are warm and dry. Question 4. Your employer must supply you with personal protective equipment, PPE. A. Uh, twice a year. B. If you pay for it. C. If it is in the contract. D. If you need to be protected. The correct answer is D. If you need to be protected. Question 5. If you drop your safety helmet from height onto a hard surface, you should A. Have any cracks repaired then carry on wearing it. B. Make sure there are no cracks then carry on wearing it. C. Work without a safety helmet until you can get a new one. D. Stop work and get a new safety helmet. The correct answer is D. Stop work and get a new safety helmet. Question 6. You must wear head protection on site at all times unless you are A. Self-employed B. Working alone C. In a safe area like the site office or canteen. D. Working in very hot weather. The correct answer is C. In a safe area, like the site office or canteen. Question 7. A risk assessment identifies A. How to report accidents. B. The site working hours. C. The hazards and safe way of doing the job. D. Where the first aid box is kept. The correct answer is C. The hazards and safe way of doing the job. Question 8. You will often hear the word hazard mentioned. What does it mean? A. Anything at work that could harm you. B. The site accident rate. C. A type of barrier or machine guard. D. All of these answers. The correct answer is. A. Anything at work that could harm you. Question 9. Which two of the following will help you find out about the site emergency procedures and emergency telephone numbers? A. Guidance from the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. B. Reading the site notice boards. C. Guidance from your local job center plus. D. Attending the site induction. E. Looking in the telephone directory. The correct answers are. B. Reading the site notice boards. D. Attending the site induction. Question 10. In an emergency you should. A. Leave site. B. Phone home. C. Follow the site emergency procedure. D. Phone the health and safety executive. HSE. The correct answer is. C. Follow the site emergency procedure. Question 11. You need to wear a full body harness. You have never used one before. What should you do? A. Ask for expert advice and training. B. 
Ask someone already wearing a harness to show you what to do. C. Try to work it out for yourself. D. Read the instruction book. The correct answer is A. Ask for expert advice and training. Question 12. Look at these statements about using power tools while wearing gloves. Which one is false? A. Anti-vibration gloves will protect you against the effects of vibration. B. Gloves will keep your hands warm and dry, which reduces the effects of vibration. C. Gloves provide a better grip so you don't need to grip too tightly, which reduces the effects of vibration. D. Gloves will protect you from cuts and abrasions. The correct answer is A. Anti-vibration gloves will protect you against the effects of vibration. Question 13. What is the main objective of carrying out an accident investigation? A. To find out who is at fault. B. To find out the causes in order to prevent it happening again. C. To find out the cost of any damage that occurred. D. To record what injuries were sustained. The correct answer is B. To find out the causes in order to prevent it happening again. Question 14. You need to use a grinder, cut-off saw, cartridge tool or nail gun. What type of eye protection will you need? A. Impact-resistant goggles or full-face shield. B. Welding goggles. C. Reading glasses or sunglasses. D. Light eye protection, safety glasses. The correct answer is Impact resistant goggles or full face shield. Question 15. When must you record an accident in the accident book? A. If you are injured in any way. B. Only if you have to be off work. C. Only if you have suffered a broken bone. D. Only if you have to go to hospital. The correct answer is A. If you are injured in any way. Question 16. What type of eye protection do you need to wear if you are using a cartridge-operated tool or compressed gas tool, nail gun? A. Light eye protection or safety glasses. B. Normal prescription glasses or sunglasses. C. Impact rated goggles. D. None. They aren't needed as there is a minimal risk of injury. The correct answer is C. Impact rated goggles. Question 17. Which of these does not have to be recorded in the accident book? A. Your national insurance number. B. The date and time of your accident. C. Details of your injury. D. Your home address. The correct answer is A. Your national insurance number. Question 18. The packaging of a substance has the word sensitizer on it. This means that A. You could become allergic to it and have allergic reactions. B. It must be mixed with water before you can use it. C. It is perfectly safe to use without personal protective equipment, PPE. D. It should not be used under any circumstances. The correct answer is A. You could become allergic to it and have allergic reactions. Question 19. When must an accident be recorded in the site's accident book? A. Only when an accident causes injury to a worker while at work. B. Only when a person is injured and will be off work for more than three days. C. Only when an accident causes damage to plant or equipment. D. Only when a person breaks a major bone or is concussed. The correct answer is A. Only when an accident causes injury to a worker while at work. Question 20. How can you tell if a product is hazardous? A. By warning symbols on the container or packaging label. B by the shape of the container. C. It will always be in a black container. D. It will always be in a cardboard box. The correct answer is A. By warning symbols on the container or packaging label. Question 21. Which two of the following items are not recorded in an accident book? A. Your national insurance number. B. Your telephone number. C. The date and time of the accident. D. The injuries sustained. E. Your home address. The correct answers are A. Your national insurance number. B. Your telephone number. Question 22. A cosh assessment tells you how A. To lift heavy loads and how to protect yourself. B. To work safely in confined spaces. C. A substance might harm you and how to protect yourself when you are using it. D. 
noise levels are assessed and how to protect your hearing? The correct answer is C. A substance might harm you and how to protect yourself when you are using it. Question 23. The safest way to use a hazardous substance is to A. Get on with the job as quickly as possible. B. Read your employer's health and safety policy. C. Understand the COSH assessment and follow the instructions. D. Ask someone who has already used it. The correct answer is C. Understand the COSH assessment and follow the instructions. Question 24. Why is it important to report all accidents? A. It might stop them happening again. B. Some types of accident have to be reported to the health and safety executive. HSE. C. Details have to be entered in the accident book. D. All of these answers. The correct answer is. D. All of these answers. Question 25. Why is it important to report near miss incidents on site? A. Because it is the law for all near miss incidents. B. To find someone to blame. C. It is a requirement of the CDM regulations. D. To learn from them and stop them happening again. The correct answer is. D. To learn from them and stop them happening again. Question 26. Which of these will give you health and safety information about a hazardous substance? A. The site diary. B. The delivery note. C. The cosh assessment. D. The accident book. The correct answer is. C. The cosh assessment. Question 27. You need to use a hazardous substance. Who should explain the health risks and safe method of work you need to follow? The cosh assessment. Before you start. A. A health and safety executive. HSE. Inspector. B. The site first aider. C. Your supervisor or employer. D. The site security people. The correct answer is. C. Your supervisor or employer. Question 28. A first aid box should not contain. A. Bandages. B. Plasters. C. Safety pins. D. Over-the-counter medicines such as aspirin or painkillers. The correct answer is. D. Over-the-counter medicines such as aspirin or painkillers. Question 29. The first aid box on site is always empty. What should you do? A. Bring your own first aid supplies into work. B. Find out who is taking all the first aid supplies. C. Find out who looks after the first aid box and let them know. D. Ignore the problem. It is always the same. The correct answer is. C. Find out who looks after the first aid box and let them know. Question 30. Wet cement, mortar and concrete is hazardous to your health as it causes. A. Uh, dizziness and headaches. B. Chemical burns and dermatitis. C. Muscle aches. D. Archi. The correct answer is. B. Chemical burns and dermatitis. Question 31. You find an unmarked container that you think might contain chemicals. What is the first thing you should do? A. Smell the chemical to see what it is. B. Put it in a bin to get rid of it. C. Ensure it remains undisturbed and report it. D. Taste the chemical to see what it is. The correct answer is. C. Ensure it remains undisturbed and report it. Question 32. It is your first day on site. You find that there is nowhere to wash your hands. What should you do? A. Wait until you get home, then wash them. B. Go to a local cafe or pub and use the wash basin in their toilet. C. Speak to your supervisor about the problem. D. Bring your own bottle of water the next day. The correct answer is. C. Speak to your supervisor about the problem. Question 33. Look at these statements about illegal drugs in the workplace. Which one is true in relation to site work? A. Users of illegal drugs are a danger to everyone on site. B. People who take illegal drugs work better and faster. C. People who take illegal drugs take fewer days off work. D. Taking illegal drugs is a personal choice so other people shouldn't worry about it. The correct answer is. A. Users of illegal drugs are a danger to everyone on site. Question 34. If you think you have found some asbestos, the first thing you should do is. A. 
Stop work and warn others. B. Take a sample to your supervisor. C. Put the bits in a bin and carry on with your work. D. Find the first aider. The correct answer is A. Stop work and warn others. Question 35. If you breathe in asbestos dust it can cause A. Aching muscles and painful joints. B. Throat infections. C. Lung diseases. D. Dizziness and headaches. The correct answer is C. Lung diseases. Question 36. If you get a hazardous substance on your hands, it can pass from your hands to your mouth when you eat. Give two ways to stop this. A. Wear protective gloves while you are working. B. Wash your hands before eating. C. Put barrier cream on your hands before eating. D. Wear protective gloves then turn them inside out before eating. E. Wash your work gloves then put them on again before eating. The correct answers are. A. Wear protective gloves while you are working. B. Wash your hands before eating. Question 37. If using on tool extraction to control dust from a power tool it is important to check that. A. The extraction unit is the correct type. B. The extraction filters are clear and the unit is extracting dust. C. You are using the power tool correctly. D. All of these answers. The correct answer is. D. All of these answers. Question 38. What training do you need to work with or remove asbestos cement products? A. General asbestos awareness training. B. Having a CSCS card tells me all I need to know. C. Training for non-licensable asbestos work. D. None. Anyone can work with asbestos cement. The correct answer is. C. Training for non-licensable asbestos work. Question 39. Where might you come across asbestos? A. In a house built between 1950 and 1990. B. In any building built or refurbished before the year 2000. C. In industrial buildings built between 1920 and 1990. D. Asbestos has now been removed from all buildings. The correct answer is. B. In any building built or refurbished before the year 2000. Question 40. You are using water as part of dust control and run out. Should you. A. Carry on as you have nearly finished. B. Stop and refill with water. C. Ask everyone to clear the area and then carry on. D. Carry on but get someone to sweep up afterwards. The correct answer is. B. Stop and refill with water. Question 41. Noise can damage your hearing. What is an early sign of this? A. There are no early signs. B. Temporary deafness or ringing noise in your ears. C. A skin rash around the ears. D. Ear infections. The correct answer is. B. Temporary deafness or ringing noise in your ears. Question 42. If you have to use a vibrating tool, how can you help reduce the effects of hand arm vibration? A. Hold the tool tightly. B. Do the work in short spells. C. Do the job in one long burst. D. Only use one hand on the tool at a time. The correct answer is. B. Do the work in short spells. Question 43. You are likely to suffer less from hand arm vibration if you are. A. Very cold but dry. B. Cold and wet. C. Warm and dry. D. Very wet but warm. The correct answer is. C. Warm and dry. Question 44. If you need to wear disposable earplugs how should you insert them so they protect your hearing from damage? A. Only put them in when it starts getting very noisy. B. Only ever insert them halfway into your ear. C. Roll them up and insert them as far as you can, while pulling the top of your ear up to open up the ear canal. D. Fold them in half and wedge them into your ear. The correct answer is. C. Roll them up and insert them as far as you can, while pulling the top of your ear up to open up the ear canal. Question 45. What equipment should you have if you are doing non-licensed work on asbestos-containing materials? A. Disposable overalls, type 5 feet. B. Suitable respiratory protective equipment, RPE, e.g. 
Disposable face mask with a FFP3 rating. C. Laceless footwear. D. All of these answers. The correct answer is. D. All of these answers. Question 46. What is vibration white finger or hand arm vibration syndrome? HAVS. A. A mild skin rash that will go away. B. A serious skin condition that will not clear up. C. Severe frostbite. D. A sign that your hands and arms have or are on the way to being permanently damaged. The correct answer is. D. A sign that your hands and arms have or are on the way to being permanently damaged. Question 47. Hand arm vibration syndrome. HAVS. Can cause. A. Skin cancer. B. Skin irritation. Like dermatitis. C. Blisters on your hands and arms. D. Damaged blood vessels and nerves in your fingers and hands. The correct answer is. D. Damaged blood vessels and nerves in your fingers and hands. Question 48. If you have to work in a hearing protection zone, you must. A. Not make any noise. B. Wear the correct hearing protection at all times. C. Take hearing protection with you in case you need to use it. D. Wear hearing protection if the noise gets too loud for you. The correct answer is. B. Wear the correct hearing protection at all times. Question 49. If you wear hearing protection, it will. A. Stop you hearing all noise. B. Reduce damaging noise to an acceptable level. C. Repair your hearing if it is damaged. D. Make you hear better. The correct answer is. B. Reduce damaging noise to an acceptable level. Question 50. The high levels of solvents in some paints and resins can cause. A. Headaches, dizziness and sickness. B. Lung problems. C. Effects on other parts of your body. D. All of these answers. The correct answer is. D. All of these answers.